Some people think the term refurbished is simply a posh name for second hand. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the case at all. A refurbished product has had something done to it to restore it to an as new like condition as possible. I've lost count of the amount of times a supplier at work has sent a dirty second hand product out to us instead of the refurbished one that we had ordered. We've had to send it back as they've done nothing to it to try and return the product to an as new like condition as possible. We've had several laser printers turn up dirty with no new components in them. No rollers, no pickup pads, not even a new fuser unit or even a refurbished fuser unit to try and bring that laser printer back up to an as new like condition as possible. In this video, I'm going to show you how to professionally refurbish a laptop to bring it back to an as new like condition as possible. Step number one, we need to inspect the laptop for damage and ensure it is safe to turn on because if it's too damaged for it to be safely turned on then you've got to fix those issues before moving on to step two and step two is we need to test it is it fully working is it damaged or is it completely dead and then we move on to step three where we must clean it this way you can see any additional damage or any issues that you didn't spot in the previous two steps now it's quite literally time for me to get my hands dirty just going to inspect this laptop for any damage it got it got it from eBay the other day you probably saw it on a previous video because we know already that it looks okay from the outside I can't see any damage the grill is okay look battery's not loose no missing screws everything looks fine except we do know that the screen is completely and utterly what's the word knackered so now we need to test it let's see if we've got a power supply there we go we have a HP power supply that matches the voltage and ampage rating of this laptop does it turn on oh I can hear the fans wearing away there we go that we're getting something on the screen but the screen is clearly cracked and smashed keyboards in really nice condition actually looks quite new it's loading Windows XP so that's a good sign just needs a bit of a clean oh luckily that's step three let's disconnect the power lead and we're going to give it a nice good clean a few scratches on the uh, top but then it is quite an old laptop there's an old label there look or the remnants of an old label I should say and to get rid of the sticky stuff we need sticky stuff remover There we go, that's gone. There's a slight dent there, look. To be honest though, I think, because the screen is smashed, I'm not just going to replace the screen, I'm going to replace the actual case as well, because I think that might be easier. Yeah, let's leave that off with that. Now I'm going to use the screen clean, which is also good for cleaning the keyboard. Mm, underneath looks okay now we've cleaned the outside but don't forget to clean the inside but then air duster look it's only going to take a couple of seconds to remove the keyboard one clip there one clip there one clip there and some screws on the bottom I believe don't know if you can see but there are two markings here of a um, picture of a keyboard and an arrow showing that there are two screws inside this flap. Let's remove the RAM cover. Yep, one screw there, one screw there. Flip it back over, zoom out a bit. Now this keyboard should
lift out like so. There we go. I'm not going to disconnect the keyboard, don't need to. There we go. That's what we're looking for. There we go, nothing of note come out. However, what we can see here, look, is we can see the RAM and we can see the CMOS battery. And we've got PC2700S, 512 megabytes of DDR RAM. Put the keyboard back in. While we're here, we'll have a quick look and see what this RAM is. I'm guessing it's the same. Nope, that's a gig. So we've got one and a half gig of RAM on this thing. Windows XP will be loving that. There we go, we've done the first three steps. Just to recap, so far we have inspected the laptop for damage, we've tested it to ascertain its current status, and we've given it a jolly good clean. As it looks like it's worth repairing, it's now time to move on to the next three steps. Step four, we're going to fix and repair all the issues that we identified in the previous steps, which was the smash screen. We're going to replace any consumable items, which may include the main battery and the CMOS battery. And we saw where that was, nice and easy to replace, so we'll do it. It might not need it, but we're doing a refurbishment. So we need to get it back to as new a condition as possible. And not only that, make it last longer or as long as possible for the, either the new owner or if I put it as part of my collection. And a CMOS battery is relatively cheap, so let's do it. Why not? In step six, we're going to consider any upgrades such as the hard disk drive and the RAM. Now we've already seen that it's got one and a half gig of RAM and we might try and get that to two, depending on what I happen to have in my RAM box. And we'll also check what hard drive it's got, because well we know, bigger the better. Once again, time to get me hands dirty. And here we have a screen that I recovered from another HP Compact 6120 that wasn't working so I have no idea actually if this screen works but it didn't appear to be damaged bit dirty but it looks okay now to get on and replace the screen there we go the screen's been replaced let's take a closer look at that CMOS battery there we go let's put this back in CMOS battery has been replaced and I've put a sticker on the bottom of the laptop with the date it was changed on so we know for future reference. Let's have a look at what hard drive it's got. It's a 40 gig Fujitsu. Well I've got quite a few 60 gigs look so tell you what let's upgrade it to 60 gig. There we go, the hard disk drive has been upgraded. Just to recap, in addition to the first three steps, we have now replaced the screen, replaced the CMOS battery, and we've upgraded the hard disk drive. Now to move on to step seven, where we need to refresh the software, such as the operating system, its drivers, and any additional software, along with step eight to clean it. And yes, that was step three, but unless you've been wearing gloves all the time, it's time to remove any fingerprints by giving it a quick clean using foam spray and the screen and keyboard cleaner. Because remember, a refurbished product is one that has been made to be in as new light condition as possible. And you don't get fingerprints on new laptops, do you? Once again, time to get my hands dirty. Time to refresh all the software. Let's start with Windows XP. Put the disk in. Turn her on. There we go. Setup is inspecting your computer's hardware configuration. I won't bore you with uh, the Windows XP install. I'll use the magic of video editing to skip ahead. There we go. Windows XP is installed. Time to install the drivers now then. Yeah, I think I'll restart my computer now. Finish. And there we go. It's exactly as if it had just been taken out of the box for the first time. Now it's time to give her a jolly good clean. So let's shut her down. 
and get cracking. I'm going to start with the screen. Now this is covered in scratches so there's not a great deal we can do with these because they're quite deep. You can still give it a good uh, clean though. There you go, nice and clean. The refurbishment is complete. We've completed all eight steps. And just to remind you what those were, was number one, was inspect for damage. Number two, was test it. Then we cleaned it. We fixed the screen. Then we replaced the CMOS battery. We upgraded the RAM and the hard drive. We refreshed the software and then we did a final clean. And that is how you do a professional refurbishment of a laptop. Thank you for watching. Please click on the like button if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful. And don't forget, if you don't want to miss any of my videos, click on subscribe. See you next time.